Brian Walter, congratulations. Both of you guys are moving forward into the next round. In round three of the competition, we're gonna be sending you guys back to your home forges to build an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is... The Sword of Saladin. This 12th century sword belonged to Saladin, a powerful Muslim leader and the first Sultan of Egypt and Syria. Believed to have been forged from steel far superior than any other weapon of the time, the sword is rumored to be the sharpest in history. Featuring a thin edge geometry, the lightweight curved blade is designed to effortlessly deliver deep cuts and lethal chops. With the help of this deadly weapon, Saladin founded a dynasty that ruled much of the Middle East for the 12th and 13th centuries. The sword is a prominent feature of a statue memorializing Saladin that stands in front of the ancient city of Damascus in Syria. I'm absolutely excited. And it's a lot longer than what I normally build, but yeah, we can do this. You guys will only have four days to complete this weapon, so we'll see you when you get back. Good luck. We're back here, Baranowski Nike Tool in good old Springville, New York. I'm ready to get after it. My biggest concern is time management. When you're on a time challenge like this, every minute is precious. Curve's going pretty well. I'm done with my forging. Head straight to the grinder and start cleaning this thing up, make it look right. Time to quench. That's the sound of success right there. Back at my home forge, making a sword with a, with a bend in it and such a steep arc like this is, is worrying me a little bit. Uh, I've not done a heat treat on something of this shape before. Close. So I'm a little worried about the heat treat. And away we go. Oh yeah. That's it. Uh, I get the quillion on it. I like it. And I get the pommel built. Pretty much the shape I want. This is an uh, emerald dyed box elder burl. I want it to look jeweled without actually being jeweled. So I got everything pretty well rough fit here. I'm just kind of pecking away at it going slowly. Nobody is going to be able to complain about that handle at all. This has been a hell of a ride, but I hope that can uh, bring me home the bacon. Ladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your version of Saladin's sword and deliver some lethal blows on this ram carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? No, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Let's do it. To see that animal sitting there with the horns hanging out, uh, it's nerve wracking. It's pretty hard on a blade, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. All right, Brian, let's talk about your version of Saladin's sword here. I noticed you have something inscribed in there. What is that? That is Saladin in Arabic. Very cool, very cool. Now, your edge. You have a sharp edge. This is a very tough ram carcass. On the neck chops, it cut deeply. And of course, on the body, it cut through in three slices. Overall, sir, your weapon? Full kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Walter, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's make some ram chops. All right. Them bones in a ram, those, those are no joke. Their hides are as tough as leather. Their fur is abrasive like sandpaper. This is a legit test. I'm slightly freaking out on the inside right now. All right, Walter, first up, your edge. This is a wicked sharp grind. Actually, when you know, it sings to me when I just touch it and pull it out, it is sharp. Cutting through hair, a thick spine, and into the meat. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. Now, Saladin's army in the 12th century would have faced off against men wearing chainmail, carrying shields, and probably a helmet. Now, to test your blade's construction, overall durability, I'll be hacking into our armored warriors here. Brian, you're up. 
Go ahead. Wow. Whew. All right, Brian. Blades this sharp and with this kind of an edge geometry often take a fairly substantial rolling when they go up against armor. Yours really didn't. I mean, there's like three spots I can feel if I run my fingernail along it. Just beautiful job. Well done. Thank you, sir. All right, Walter, you're up. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. All right, Walter, there's a little bit of a glinting and a little bit of a rough spot here, here, and maybe here. Other than that, this blade still has a wicked edge on it. Curvature's really, really nice. You nailed it. Scale, right on. Well done. Thank you, sir. You bet. Close race. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take your weapon and I will cut through these Egyptian rugs. Now I'm looking for clean cuts. Brian, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade here. It is razor sharp. As I punctured and cut through the carpet, there were very clean cuts. Overall, sir, your edge, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Walter, are you ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. Look at that ring. All right, Walter, let's talk about your weapon here. Razor sharp. It was easy to penetrate, very easy to drag across. These are very clean cuts. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, the judges have made the decision. Today's champion is... Walter. What, what? It's just a jock. <laughs> I can't believe this. Now, unfortunately, Brian, that means you did not win today. This is the closest decision I have ever had to make, ever. Brian, you brought us an absolutely beautiful weapon. It tested fantastically. It felt fantastic in my hand. We made this decision based on the smallest of details, and it came down to the curvature of the blade. Yours just has a little wobble in it. The other doesn't. It's that close. You should be incredibly proud of that blade, and it was an absolute pleasure to be able to wield it. Thank you very much. Brian, unfortunately, that means you didn't make the cut today. I'm going to have to ask you to head off to Force 4. Bro, it's been an honor. I'm a little disappointed to not be in the winner's circle, but very proud of the fact that Dave said it was one of the hardest decisions they've ever had to make. I feel I did pretty good. Well, Walter, congratulations, buddy. You are the Forge and Fire champion. You'll be going out of here with a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I don't even know right now. <laughs> <laughs> I won. <laughs> I can't believe it. 10 grand is nothing to sneeze at, but I want to take a portion of it and donate it to some kind of cancer organization. Cancer's taken a lot of people away from me that I care about. It took my dad, and I want to be able to give back a little bit. What a wild ride. <laughs>